Today, we will talk about the digestive system. What do you know about it? In this lesson, we will talk about the functions, the two kinds of digestion, and the organs involved in the digestive system. So stay with me until the end of this video. The digestive system has three main functions. I think you can guess from the word itself. Digestive comes from the root word digest. It means break down. So its first function is to break down food into molecules the body can use. It is not just breaking down into smaller pieces, but turning it into nutrient molecules. In other words, if you're eating solid food, for example, from solid, it will be broken down to liquid form, or what we call molecules. Now, at this stage, the second function of the digestive system is to absorb the molecules or nutrients into the blood. And so after the body had absorbed the necessary nutrients, the third function is to eliminate waste from the body. Apparently, an adult digestive tract is about 9 meters long. It runs from the mouth, where digestion begins, to the anus, where waste are eliminated. There are two kinds of digestion. But what is digestion? Digestion is the process of breaking down food into smaller molecules that the body can use. The two kinds of digestion are mechanical and chemical. In mechanical digestion, foods are physically broken down into smaller pieces. Food enters the mouth and starts to be mechanically broken down by chewing as the teeth are used to grind up the food. Then, chemical digestion starts when the salivary glands release salivary amylase, which is an enzyme that breaks down starches chemically. Enzymes are proteins that speed up the chemical reactions in your body. In other words, chemical digestion is simply breaking down the smaller pieces of food into molecules or nutrients with the help of the enzyme called saliva. Another function of the saliva is to wet the food to make it easier to bring down the esophagus to the stomach. The food is mushed into a ball by the tongue called a bolus and then pressed against the back of the throat where it triggers the swallowing reaction. The esophagus contracts in a wave-like motion called peristalsis, pushing the food down to the stomach. The food remains in the esophagus for only about 10 seconds. You can even swallow upside down because of peristalsis. Peristalsis also occurs in the stomach and farther down the digestive system. These waves keep food moving in one direction. When the food leaves the esophagus, it enters the stomach. Layers of muscle contract to produce a churning motion. The stomach releases hydrochloric acid, which activates pepsin, an enzyme that digests proteins. There are mucus-secreting cells in the stomach to protect it from the acid. Very little absorption takes place in the stomach. Absorption is the process by which nutrient molecules pass through the wall of your digestive system into your blood. Food remains in the stomach until all solid material has been broken down into liquid form. Then, the food is released into the next part of the digestive system. Can you guess where the food goes next? That's right, the small intestine. It is the parts of the digestive system where most chemical digestion takes place. As the food reaches the small intestine, the pancreas releases enzyme to neutralize hydrochloric acid. The liver secretes bile stored in the gallbladder. Bile consists of salts that break down fats. Fiber is one substance that is not broken down by any digestive enzymes. Instead, fiber thickens the liquid material in the intestine. This thickening makes it easier for peristalsis to push the material through the digestive system. 
The walls of the small intestine are covered in villi, which are tiny hair-like structure that help in absorption of nutrients. The digested products are absorbed across the wall of the small intestine. While the primary function of the small intestine is absorption, all final digestion of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats takes place here. Most nutrients have been absorbed by the time the material reaches the end of the small intestine. The remaining material moves into the large intestine. The large intestine is primarily a holding tank of waste material. Absorption of minerals such as calcium, magnesium, B vitamins, and some amino acids takes place here. The waste in the large intestine is compressed into solid form before it enters the rectum and leaves the body through the anus. So there you have it. That's how our digestive system works. I hope by this time you have a better understanding about the digestive system.